Our mission is to disrupt space, dismantle normal, and redefine beauty and virtuosity. So the main objective is for people to walk away with a shifted perception of what beauty and virtuosity is. Kind of to dismantle this perception of dance as dancers only looking a certain way. I think it really, um, it can do powerful cultural work um, in in what in helping people to realize what is possible for for them for their world for the future, um, and especially this is really important for people with disabilities because I think um, this group in particular has been told their whole lives that they can't do things or they're unable to do things that they have limitations they have to, um, and I think. Um, it's really important for them to be able to see themselves, people like themselves, in a really positive way. Performance makes me feel alive and engaged, actualized. This piece is, is definitely funny when it comes to uh, body image. I mean, our, our, our costumes, or at least my costume, is extremely revealing. Mine is a dress and it's uh, transparent. And, but I'm not very self-conscious when I'm doing it. It's like um, I become sort of insular. But when I'm on stage, it's like I have a bit of invincibility, but then I also feel like I'm very naked. The very naked, and it's a battle. But I love being on stage. You know, that's when I, I like to give people the, oh, snap reaction. I love the creative process and working with Heidi and finding movement, my movement, and, um, and just kind of understanding how I fit in with her dance company. The general public um, needs to see disabled people, disabled bodies on stage as performers in an, in an aesthetically kind of beautiful way, creating art. Um, because it opens up the possibilities of what we, we think is possible. Heidi likes to play with the line uh, between extreme stillness and explosive movement. I'm a choreographer who loves movement. I like stillness, but I never really loved stillness. And Heidi is actually much more interested in the stillness than the movement. She, she refers to it as virtuosic stillness. And all of a sudden, all these people that I had invited into the space with me were still, very still. And I felt drawn into their worlds and became fascinated. And I felt like you could really see a person when they were still much more than when they were moving. And I think for the general public also that it can help seeing, seeing disabled bodies on stage in a performative way, in an aesthetic way, can help to kind of normalize the, the social expectations. Um, again, not just for people as dancers or artists, but across all areas of life that, you know, once these barriers get broken down, the general public can see disabled people in, not, in, in, in non-traditional roles for, for them uh, and in non-disabled spaces. So it becomes routine. At some point, it has to become normal to the audience. That when you start seeing more disabled people on stage that are actually artists, like, yeah, there are disabled people that are talented and have skill and they are, they can be professional singers or dancers or models or, or artists, you know, animation, whatever it is that, we're, that we are always excluded from, they're, are disabled people that have those skills. If we don't see ourselves in the cultural imagination, then how can we value that in the future? So it's, it's really important to start making these type of stories to like just plant ourselves in the cultural imagination. You have to keep shoving it in people's faces to let them see 
what's unusual to them so that they can become aware that, oh, it's not really that different or that scary. This was a very scary proposition. And I had to make sure, number one, that all my performers were comfortable. Um, we wore masks the entire time. Well, it's no fun dancing in a mask, mm. period. And it's no fun dancing without an audience. Uh, even on the shoot day, I decided I wanted to film them with their masks and without. The audience sort of gives you like that cortisol, that, that energy, where it, which is a natural painkiller, so it makes it easier to get through the pieces. And I started thinking about what the mask represents. It doesn't just represent protecting yourself from COVID and protecting other people from COVID. So it's a real community engagement when people do it, but it's also about who's afraid to speak and who's not being heard. Sweeping brown eyes. Deadly stare, strong arms and heavy hands. It's about the idea of kind of like resetting your aesthetic value and just start appreciating like, oh, you know, you don't need to have a ballet body, whatever that means, but it's still, you can create beautiful movement. You can still, you can still evoke provocative storytelling, you know? And the message for me is what I've always believed in is that by coming together, we can create great change, where change is needed. Medium build, short arms, short arms, small feet, small feet, short short running gaze, red birch mark, covering chat, I hope that this work can inspire people actually to come together, to work together, to move through a dark period.